All right, so Jim. Um, hi, my name is Rachel. I am with the Horror Assist, and uh, thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, Absolutely. I, yeah, we were just talking before we started recording that we kind of wiped shoulders um, a year or two ago, whatever, when I we featured Strange Nature on Movie Pile, and so it's really cool that like now you've released a new trailer. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about the film and what makes this trailer... Um, Definitely focused on more of like the horror aspects, I guess, as opposed to the like eco thriller aspects than the cheese are dead. Oh my goodness, holy stutter, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's uh, it's it's an ecological thriller, eco horror film, um, basically based on these real life deformities that happened in 1995 in Minnesota. They started popping up all over the place. Hideous mutated frogs extra limbs, missing limbs, misplaced eyeballs, and nobody knew what the hell was going on except there was something in the water. So when I found that this thing is still happening but moving across the country in different areas, I wrote an ecological thriller about how a small town in Minnesota deals with this when these malformations, these deadly malformations, move beyond the ponds. And, uh, yeah, and here we are with Strange Nature. So we um, – we just released this new trailer. It's an amazing editor friend of mine, Josh Earl. Um, he edited it. And, uh, yeah, we just wanted to ramp up the intensity of it without completely giving everything away, but kind of giving you an idea of where we're headed with it. Yeah, I loved it. I was actually blown away because I loved the whole premise, obviously, the first time we talked about the film. So this one, I was like, oh, my gosh, there was so much more adrenaline pumping. So... I need to know, and I love that um, I'm totally quoting you on something in the water. That was beautiful. I'm like, hmm, maybe that's where this whole came from. That was perfect timing for you to drop that tidbit. But, uh... <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Well, it was like we, we realized in prior trailers and stuff, too, we were, we were hiding a lot. And it was like, you know what? There's obvious things where people are going to know where we're going. So let's stop trying to hide so much. Let's not give everything away, but let's be a little more open with where some of this is going. And that allows us to show some of the more intense aspects of the film. And, you know, since dropping this um, new trailer and like kind of letting us see a little bit more about like, you know, um, the whole like action and storyline behind it, have you noticed any like heavy traffic? Is there a bigger like um, word of mouth, you know, hitting social media? Definitely word of mouth. I've been just inundated with tons of personal messages from people being super excited of a bunch of different um, horror outlets have been picking it up and reposting it. So it, uh, it definitely got a lot of energy really quickly. Oh, that is awesome. So um, going back to the actual like inspiration from the 90s, was there any like one case that really gave you um, a little bit more of the insidious inspiration behind the story or any of like the truths that you really tried to keep in there and then just, you know, go crazy with the rest? Well, yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically, I uh, I wanted to kind of stick to the story, realizing that it was still happening. But then um, a big thing that happened was we got in touch with a real life consultant, like one of the biggest ecolo ecologists in the U.S. working on these cases. And he was so supportive because he was like, whoa, finally, somebody's making a film about this because it's still not completely solved. And then when I started to find out some of the theories, it was like, whoa, this is amazing. Like there's – like the leading theory of why this is happening is pesticide and fertilizer overspray from farmlands getting into wetlands, boosting algae growth, therefore bringing in these parasitic, parasitic worms that infest inside of um, snails. And then snails go down to the algae. And then that releases these parasitic worms into the water, and they immediately just know to burrow into the, um, the limb, where the limbs would grow, in tadpoles. And it purposely screws up the development, purposely makes them handicapped. So when they start to grow limbs, instead of growing one limb, it doesn't grow anything, or it'll grow four limbs where there should be one limb. Therefore, when this frog gets onto land and fully – metamorphosizes as a frog it's handicapped and it can't move quickly therefore 
a, uh, a predator, a bird or whatever, can swoop down, capture it quickly um, because the frog can't get away so easy. And then the life cycle of the parasite basically continues in the feces of the bird, and then it gets dropped back on land near the wetland, and then the whole cycle starts again. And Holy like, shit! That, that like, like that's like not science fiction. That's a real thing. I was like, "Holy shit!" That like blew my mind. How horrifying that is. And what if that something like that goes up the food chain? That's um, insane. And it was just right. So I was like, "Okay, this is." I really, I really have something to go with here. You know. Oh my god! Can you tell us? Like, were there any other like incredible theories that like stuck out? Like. Give us more. Now we're like, I'm so into it. You had me at, you had well, me no, at like, theories. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was, there was a lot of the, the, the usual suspects, you know, different, <laughs> yeah. you know, pollutions, oil, gas, all these things that can lead to malformations. But when I started to see the actual numbers, they're staggering. Like just yesterday, our uh, ecology consultant sent us a 10 year study that was just done. The biggest study that's ever been in, done in the U S across 42 states, finding anywhere from 5 to 25% of the frogs malformed in some way as a result of one of these causes I've been talking about. But then they found hot spots in, like, in, in uh, Northern California and Oregon that went way over that level, up to like 70, 80%. And then one population in Oregon, they found every single frog they pulled out of this pond was mutated. A hundred percent. It's the first time that's ever happened in history. So it's like, whoa, like you're not finding those concentrations in Minnesota like you were, but it's actually moving. So that's just another thing that I found just fascinating and terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I'm I I get so um captivated by any kind of theory or just, you know, and that's why I love like the whole investigative nature of this film, which Strange nature. Darn it. You know, you try and not use the same word in the same sentence twice. <laughs> Darn it. it oh. Whatever gets the word out there. See, fail. This is out. why I'm not a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so. Like, I, I mean, no, I go on. To, I mean, I, I love all kinds of, of genres, but during that period when I started writing the script in like the two, you know, early or, you know, mid 2000s, I'd really gotten fatigued from. Home invasion horror films, ghost films, possession films. It was like I really want to do something different. And the fact that I'm a makeup and creature effects artist with my own shop, it was like, okay, this is something we could do that we can like sh help showcase the other things we can do as well. I I love it. I can't wait. I actually, this is one, and I'm going to say this just so everyone knows, this is one, like, I haven't ever seen a screener for, so this isn't even me, like, biasly trying to, like, shamelessly sell the film to everyone. I am just as excited as everyone else who hasn't seen it. So, speaking of um, which, there's a really awesome cast. I see you have a couple... Um, well, one is um, Lisa Sheridan. She's great. Um, I see John Hennigan. He's a wrestler. He was in Glow. He had, um, I believe he was the trainer. He was hilarious for the episode he was in. Yeah, and he, was, he was amazing. He plays a, a pretty incredible villain in Strange Nature. He's, uh, yeah, he's intense. <laughs> I am so excited to see him. I love that he's um, doing more and more acting. And Tiffany Shepis, I'm so excited. I I love seeing her name on just about any bill. So when I see it, um, that was initially what drew me to this film. And now I'm just so excited about the film in general. So that was a win. Um, yeah, so no, how great. Yeah. How hands on were you with the casting? What, what's that? Were you very hands on with the casting? You know, were you there? Were you present? Did you kind of trust it to your casting directors or, you know, did you have um, other options? What was up? Um, I was very present with that. Um, when we started some of the the um, the casting process, I was actually on a job in Brazil, back and forth um, on a, on a makeup effects job. So we had a great casting director, Jeff Pissarro, and he and my wife Beth handled a lot, some of the first round stuff while I was out of town, and then in in, in um, re recorded all of the auditions. So I would I would be able to look over everything, and then for all the callbacks, I was there. For, for meeting everybody and then finally, you know, doing the pare downs. But I mean, it was, 
it was a long casting process. I mean, uh, uh, the um, the kids, the kids are, it's a tough thing, you know, to, to find oh, the yeah. right kid that's got the good look and that's got the, the chops. And um, Jonah Barris, who is our, our main uh main actor kid he's uh amazing and we went through a lot of kids before we found him so it uh it was it was good but in the great thing about our casting director jeff is he would do he would do anything like the most fearless casting director because because i was like look i i've got a lot of my own money invested in this i i need i need to know that we at least tried so I mean, we're we're calling up Kurt Russell and John Goodman and then like That's all great. these people we have no business talking to. <laughs> but just I, I I need to know that we at least try. And if we get a no, fine, you know. Yeah, for sure. I'm the exact well, I'm pushy, pushy, but yeah, you can't. You gotta throw yourself out there. So like that comes to mind. Was there anyone in particular that you really did um pursue that you wanted to be on board maybe it was cast or maybe it was even part of the crew that you just couldn't get or was disinterested for whatever reason um there were uh there were there were a few but um but i'd rather not say just because i don't want to you know make it look bad on anybody that we ended up with because oh, yeah. everybody in our crew was in uh, and our cast is incredible so all, all of our cast completely nailed it so we we ended up with the right cast that's perfect though when that happens that's um that's destiny so um so right about now where can fans be checking out strange nature are you guys in the festival circuit are you premiere post premiere on tell them everyone who doesn't have a press kit where they can be finding you right now um, well, they can find out more information on the film on our website, strangenaturemovie.com. We update it with news and all that all the time. We're also on Facebook. If you look up Strange Nature Movie, we're Strange Nature One um, on Twitter. So uh, we're doing all the updates there. And right now we're looking at making some deals with some sales agents for domestic and foreign and um yeah it's it's looking good and then from there hopefully we'll be um doing some festivals like we're just starting some of that the festival um submissions and checking in with those guys right now so hopefully something in the the spring summer um as far as uh festivals yeah um that's awesome i mean like i for one i love the festival circuit and stuff so that's one of my favorite places to go because i love the indie films you know you just don't get as for it so i'm going to be checking out any ones that i can make it to whether it's a five state drive like that's usually where i draw my limit for going but um before i um get on with you i have a couple more questions unrelated to this film if you don't mind um I've been a subscriber to Shudder since they first launched, and I can't remember if that's been two, three, four years now, and I am pretty sure that you have some work going on there exclusively for right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about The Core? Yes, yes. The Core is an incredible horror talk show, kind of a horror comedy talk show um, on Shudder that we bring on different guests every week um mickey keating the filmmaker is a great filmmaker he's an amazing host of the show um and we talk with them find out what they're into we watch some of the movies that influence them clips and then involve them in different scenarios and and then i might do something crazy to them i might stick their hand in the blender or blow their head off and then uh just by surprise and then i'll take you behind the scenes and show you how we did it different ways of doing it and how you could even do it on a lower budget so um, it's it's awesome. It's like the coolest show ever. We we've had you know we just did uh, Elijah Wood and Spectra Vision guys. We had the Soska twins on. We had um, Simon Barrett, Lee Wanell, all these, and we've got some amazing guests coming up in the next three weeks as well. I am so excited. Um, I'm guilty. I haven't seen too much of it outside the trailer recently because we were talking and I'm so mad because I'm on Shutter all the time. But I'm going to blame the fact that um, one of the sites I work for, we are on hiatus switching new platforms. So I'm like, oh, this would have been perfect. I'm going to totally throw them under the bus and say it's because we're on Christmas break. <laughs> <laughs> My investigative skills are slacking. So I need to know, like, so this show is a mix between special effects, behind the scenes, um, film freaks. What was the most um, 
crazy episode or instance or prank, what have you be it on your show so far? Um, one of the really cool things we did that kind of blew everybody away was uh, we had this one effect segment for the, the Halloween episode. We had Daniel Harris and Adam Green on as our guests. And I was demonstrating with Adam Green um, how we could make a, a severed head of somebody that we could completely disassemble. And so we made this like super intricate severed head of a crew member that got his head lopped off. And bit by bit on camera, we like rip his entire head apart. Like we rip the skin off. You can see we crack the skull open. There's a brain inside. We rip his tongue out, his eyeballs, like everything is in there. And it's, it's, and you can see it from every single angle. And it's, now I'm uh, moist. Look what you've done. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really hideous, but it's, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> that is so, I am so stoked. Like, you know, honestly, I, I have probably like two or three hours for really have to do anything today. And I, I'm totally just going to want, I'm going to binge out on the entire show. I'm binge going to. Binge out on it. It's, you can stop it. You can always, I mean, that's the great thing about Shudder and online entertainment. You can kind of go back to it whenever love it. you want. But I got to say, it's like, it's the show that I wished was around when I was growing up. Like you, there, there wasn't anything like that. And I'm just, as an effects guy, I'm used to just usually about maybe half of what you work on ends up being, you know, not so great. Like the films or the projects or whatever, like you're always proud of the work you do, but sometimes the projects, you know, are, don't turn out great. But this is one that was like, even if I had nothing to do with this, this would be on the top of my watch list. I'm so excited. I am really excited, especially like, and I'm excited for you because it is on Shudder and they are definitely probably, if not one of the most, the most um, popular horror streaming app. I mean, like I said, I've been a customer for years and I've popped in and out of other ones. So um, I hope the show really, really takes off. Um, in the meantime, is there anything else you want to maybe um, drop to your fans? Anything we maybe want to touch base on before we go? Um, I think, I think that's I think that's mainly it. I mean, I'm I'm in the works on a bunch of other like TV and film projects as well, but we're all in like the writing and pitching stage on other things. So um, some of that's under wraps for now. But uh, but yeah, otherwise just uh, keep an eye out for Strange Nature. And if, when we do uh, the premiere, we were ta we were talking with some of our um, science consultants, and we might actually have some of the live mutated frogs there at the screen huh. on display because one of the one of the cool things was when we started um you know getting ready like pre-production on the film i was like well mm -hmm. as an effects guy how the hell are we going to make these intricate yeah. frogs these deformed frogs and make a move right and like no matter how you how good you are like that's a really tricky thing to create and i was like wait a minute it's a real thing maybe we could just get the real thing and sure enough we were able to have uh, live mutated frogs brought in and they're they're on screen in the film like we start with the real thing and then we take it in other directions where we incorporate our effects but we actually have the real thing and we may have them on display at the uh, screen as well so it's like literally like super super special special effects <laughs> <laughs> super special effects, exactly <laughs> yeah i just touched into my like inner 90s girl since it's all like inspired so i had to go like totally share and dion with it um, <laughs> right. so I'm going to go ahead and bid you adieu. I'm also going to tell you that, um, after I'm done, um, we definitely need to hook up again and touch base and talk about the core and maybe, um, a little bit more on Strange Nature at a later date or possibly after the premiere. So thank you on behalf of me and everyone at the Horror Assist for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. You have a great day, Jim. Thank you so much. You too. Take care, Rachel. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye.